What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So, I was watching a lot of these talking heads this morning. I don't really like watching these guys, but at the end of the day, uh, I have to stomach it to be able to retort to some of these asinine uh, comments, you know, and soliloquies some of these morons go on. Uh, so, I had to fight to keep my food down. So, I was watching. Um, First things first, and they were talking about how you know you know look look Boston blew a twenty four point lead to the Pelicans. It was the biggest turn uh, come from behind victory in, in New Orleans Pelicans history, and um, you know Boston falls to fifteen and fifteen, and they were talking about you know all the reasons why Boston is struggling. Some players aren't playing well. Uh, Kemba Walker. They said it was a shell of himself, but they didn't mention that Kemba Walker was injured. Um, they they blamed uh, the, the the absence of Marcus Smart. Other guys aren't playing very well. They even said that Gordon Haywood is missed. Now look, I'm the first to admit that this year Gordon Haywood is playing well. I meant to do a video talking about that. After Gordon Haywood has a signature performance, I'm gonna make a video. I'm gonna do a mea culpa and say that look, I was wrong. Okay, Gordon Haywood is playing well, but let's not get it twisted. For most of his tenure with Boston, Gordon Haywood was trash. He was trash defensively, and offensively, he was extraordinarily inconsistent and far from an all-star. Okay, but let's be honest about something. When are people going to start putting Brad Stevens on the hot seat? Okay, let's be honest. Okay, why is he, along with uh, Mike Budenholzer, getting all these passes? Hmm? Why? Why? Remember when Dwayne Casey was coach of the year with, with Toronto? They won 59 games, and then they subsequently fired him um, right before they got Kawhi Leonard and hired Nick Nurse, and then they won a title, and Nick Nurse got all the praise. Remember that? Remember right after uh, Mike Brown won Coach of the Year in 2010, and after LeBron James left, and just fired him, you know, completely rebuilt and just fired him like he was nobody. You know, um, how many situations have we seen, and I'm just to be honest, where we've seen black coaches build the foundation for a great team, Tony Dungy in Tampa Bay, you know, and then – they get fired and then replaced by somebody like uh, Mike uh, Gruden, and um, they get all the praise. I'm just look. I don't. I'm not afraid to tell the truth on this channel. Let's just be honest about Brad Stevens, okay? Now, first of all, he coaches a team, Boston, that gets a lot of buzz every year, right? They get a lot of buzz every year to begin the season, as far as a title contending team, or at least a team contending out of the Eastern Conference. And what do we see every year? Every year they underachieve. Now, at first, you could use the built-in excuse that LeBron was in the way. Okay? LeBron was in the way. But LeBron's no longer terrorizing the Eastern Conference. He's in the West. So someone explained to me why Brad Stevens in his career is only, I think, 36 and 37 in the playoffs, in his coaching career, sub-500, with one of the more talented rosters in basketball last couple of years. Now, do they have a certified super-duper star on their roster? No, but they have a collection of a lot of talent on that team. Last year in the bubble, Eric Spolstra clearly outcoached him with an inferior team. Miami, talent-wise. That team was inferior. It was Jimmy Butler and really a bunch of role players. And they beat Boston. And there have been many times when Boston, when you think about it, struggled against teams that they should be sweeping. Think about it. In all the years that Brad Stevens has been the head coach of that team, can you really think of a time in the playoffs that they've really overpowered somebody? like just I mean, 
man, you see, man, Boston's beating this shit, man. Boston rolling, no. They win a game, they look great, and they lose a game that they should have won. Then they win a game, they look, you know, okay, this is the Boston we see. Then they win a game, they're up 3-1. Then they lose two goddamn games. And they're forced to a game seven. You know what I'm talking about with this team. And it's not all coaching, but so, a lot of it is. I don't care what Shaq says. Coaching has a lot to do with winning. Unless you have one of these super teams like, um, you know, the, the, the Brooklyn Nets or something like that or Miami, then maybe sometimes it's not about coaching. But even then, when you face a team that's of equal strength, like when Miami was facing, say, uh, the Spurs teams in the mid 2010s, when it comes down to it, when you evenly match like that, then it, sometimes it does still come down to coaching. As Greg Popovich proved, he's an all-time great coach, even against Spolstra. But against Spolstra, against Stevens, it was the opposite story. So what I'm saying is Brad Stevens, to me, is an average coach. You know what I'm saying? He's an average coach. Um, and it's time to be on the hot seat. Even in the regular season, has Boston ever really, like, dominated? Like, gone 58 and 24 or something like that. They're always, like, 50 and 32 or... 51 and 31 or 49 and 34 or 33. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're never like the type of team, even in that conference, they should be dominating that conference. Outside of Brooklyn and Philly, outside of those two teams, Boston should be dominating everybody else with the experience that they have. Now, I get they're not completely 100% healthy, but they are they should, they should are better than a 500 team. And that's all I got to say, man. Tell me what you guys think.